Hello there. The era of 9 to 5 office work looks to be over in Australia and even for most parts of the world. With many of the world's largest employers moving to hybrid work models, these work flexibility arrangements are likely to stay beyond the pandemic. In this two-part series, I will discuss how the new normal will affect how we view and the autonomy and flexibility in the new normal and how this will affect how we work. In the first video of this series, I will discuss the workplace flexibility paradigm developed by the University of California that challenges how we imagine a flexible workplace to be. I will explore how people view flexibility and how we can adapt a new mindset to help us take advantage of workplace autonomy and flexibility in the new normal. And finally, I will discuss how businesses can support workplace autonomy. I'll be right back. Welcome back. My name is Raymond Huan, and if you own a business, you are interested in business, or you wish to learn about the tips and tricks on how to operate your business better, I encourage you to click on the subscribe button that you see before you right now. The flexible work revolution is said to be one of the most enduring legacies of the coronavirus pandemic, potentially reshaping Australia's workplaces. Many companies in Australia across different industries are moving towards the new normal with a flexible or hybrid work setup. In banking and finance, such as the Commonwealth Bank, National Australia Bank, ANZ and Westpac, and Afterpay. In agricultural and mining, such as West Farmers and Rio Tinto. Even in consumer-facing businesses, such as Woolsworth, Coles, Telstra and the Goodman Group, just to name a few. But what does it mean to have a flexible workplace? Workplace flexibility can mean different things to different people. It can mean having the opportunity to choose when to work. For a caregiver, it might mean being able to leave work early to take an elderly parent to a doctor's appointment. It might mean taking a midday run for a parent, so evenings can be spent with their children. And for others, it could simply be just taking an hour in the afternoon to go to a yoga class or just to recharge. Flexibility can also mean having the opportunity to choose where to work or how they perform their work. It can mean attending a meeting through Zoom or on a Monday morning in the beach. It can also mean being able to make improvements to work processes to make them easier, simpler or basically even more cost efficient. And it also means allowing team members to decide on tasks and responsibilities that align with their roles. And with the different definitions of work flexibility, how do you as a business owner afford flexibility to your team that will fit your business and organizational needs and yet satisfy your team's need for autonomy and flexibility? Let's explore that. The key to understanding work autonomy is to understand the four different aspects of this work. That is, what work to do, that is content autonomy, where to do the work, the location autonomy, when to work, or the work time autonomy, and how to do work, the work method autonomy. Hybrid and flexible work policies only work if it considers all four aspects of work autonomy. Previously, the focus has been on content autonomy or autonomy over what work to do. But the pandemic shifted the focus to location autonomy, where to work, and work time autonomy, when to work, but with less attention given to work method autonomy or how to do work. Once we develop this mindset, what do we need to focus next on? How do we support this authentic workplace autonomy? The UC Berkeley paradigm proposes three steps. The first step is to just say it, that is to mandate a clear work autonomy directive. This means making it clear to all members that a flexible work policy is being put in place. The next step is to actually support what you just said that is to mobilize internal support for this policy or mandate. Policy changes will require new or additional resources to help the team to be more accustomed to the flexible work setup. The last step is to monitor the performance. Is it working? Is it not working? This step is crucial because this will provide you with the information on what you need to do to sustainably support your flexible work policy. In the last half of 2020, Inventium, a business management consulting firm based in Victoria, 
ran a six-month experiment of a four-day workweek policy. This experiment proved to be a huge success for the organization, making the four-day workweek permanent in Inventium. Their policy mandate was simple. Everyone worked for four days a week and had Fridays off. It was made clear to everyone that this would begin as a six-month experiment. If it worked to everyone's advantage, then they would continue and make the setup a permanent one. To help top managers understand the sentiment and fears of everyone in Inventium, staff were asked to imagine why a four-day work week would fail. The survey results showed that staff were most concerned with decreased collaboration and team management. For this reason, they mandated that everyone take the same day off to ensure that everyone can meet and collaborate. Inventium was in the business of helping their clients improve workplace productivity. Therefore, they considered themselves already a productive team. However, they understood that working four days a week was entirely different from working five days a week. So they rolled out productivity training lessons for everyone and provided the team with 10 additional strategies to boost their productivity, to help staff feel empowered, to make changes in how they approach their work and to adjust to the new work policy. Top managers encouraged everyone to treat the four day work week policy as an experiment for six months that it was implemented. People were free to test their own hypothesis for example, will a four-day work week improve productivity? Will it improve employee engagement? Will it affect client management? Team members were encouraged to run their own tests and choose their methods to test their productivity. By the end of this six-month experiment, Inventium's productivity increased by 26%. What can we learn from Inventium's experience? Launching a hybrid of flexible work policy it takes more than just mandating where and when people can work. People value flexibility for differing reasons and will take advantage of the new work policy differently. For a hybrid policy to work for both the organization and the individual, businesses should also mobilize support, particularly training and monitor performance. If and when successfully implemented, a flexible work policy will benefit your team and your business. My name is Raymond Huan. Thank you very much for giving me your time that I can share with you about this topic and I hope to catch up with you in part two of this video series very soon.